That goes with uh, mask mandates, too. Uh, you almost need a, a scorecard lately to keep up with Missouri's mask or no mask mandates. You got from school districts to city and county governments. Fox 2 legal analyst Chet Pleban joins us to help clarify what I just coined the phrase, and I thought it was really clever, mask <laughs> confusion. It's, that was clever. Thanks. Yeah, that's, well, that's, <laughs> that was very clever. You say so. Oh, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll give you an A. And, and a lot of people are talking about House Bill 271. Wasn't that supposed to clarify everything? But you, basically, let's talk about that section of, of the House Bill, what, what it does. All, all the House Bill does is it says uh, that if a an order is issued, issued relative to some public health matter. By a county okay. executive, for By example. By a county executive or, or whatever or the mayor, mayor, whatever it might right. be, uh, that you eventually have to get the, con the concurrence of the county council, whether it be 20 days or 30 days, depending upon whether it's a, an emergency. And, and so, and if you don't get that concurrence, uh, they can go ahead and they can essentially overrule the county executive in the first instance. And that's what we're talking about now with, re with respect to Page's public health order. Right, and then it, it, Eric Schmidt, uh, the attorney general, filed suit. And this includes not only St. Louis County, but the city of St. Louis as well. And yesterday they met with the judge, and the judge is like, oh, you, you haven't compromised yet. Come back tomorrow at 11, which is today. And my gut tells me they still haven't compromised. And the judge will be forced to make a decision. And based on everything I've read that she's written, she's probably going to say, yeah, mask mandate, but how do you enforce it? You really can't. Well, cer certainly she's trying to facilitate a compromise. God love her. She doesn't want to make a decision. No, I, I think what she's trying to do is, is uh, if she's going to follow the law, that's, that's going to upset one side or the other. Right. And so what she's saying is, look, see if you can strike a compromise. See if reasonable minds can get together and structure something that's beneficial to both sides. Both sides, one side is not going to go away 100%. The other side is not going to go away. So you strike a compromise. You don't necessarily get all that you want, but let's see what we can do. Now, I think, frankly, we, uh, we've got a better chance of curing cancer than we do of both of these parties getting together in this litigation. I understand but, that. But, okay, she's, she's certainly trying. Now, once, that, once they come back today and they say, you know, we're, we're deadlocked, no, no compromise, no deal. There'll be a hearing. They'll be, she can uh, proceed to the next step, which is a preliminary injunction, okay. and she can certainly take evidence on the preliminary injunction. And then after that, if she issues the preliminary injunction, the next phase would be a, a permanent injunction. Mm -hmm. so, so, but but uh, as far as the House bill is concerned that you're talking about, the, what that talks about is whether or not that public health mandate denies access to these businesses or schools or, or churches. So uh, I suppose she could look at this and she can say, well, wait a minute, you put on a mask. That, you doesn't, can still mean, go inside. that doesn't mean you can't go to church. It doesn't right. mean that you can't go to a restaurant and order the food. So therefore, the, the, the mandate is within the parameters or the confines of the ability of the county executive to issue that order because you're not denying the access. All right, so if the judge uh, basically goes through and makes the decision, it doesn't end there, does it? Or does no, it? Well, I, no. Somebody I, I, else is going to move in and say, well, hey, I'm going to appeal I, that. I, I, I suppose, but, but, but look, the, how, even if you have a mask mandate, how in the world are you going to enforce that? So at the end of the day, I suppose what's going to have to happen is, you know, and, and the judge hit the nail on the head. This is about politics, right. plain and simple. Oh, yeah, it's, it's about politicians pandering to get votes. And, and they're playing around with public health and safety issues. I mean, we, we have all sorts of public health issues. And they say, well, we're not going to enforce the mass mandate. Well, does that mean then that it, maybe we won't enforce the, the speeding laws, the traffic laws? I've heard that. You know, and, and, and so, and you, you, your kids have to be vaccinated in order to go to school. Does that mean that we're just going to simply ignore that? This is a matter of public health and public safety, what's in the public interest. And this issue was decided back in 1905 by the United States Supreme Court. And so if there is a public health crisis, then that gives way to your personal freedom. So don't tell me that you have all these freedoms and, and your freedoms are being denied. The court has done that. They did that back in 1905. And it's in what's in the public good and the public welfare. 
No different than speeding, no different than seatbelt laws, no different than smoking in, in uh, businesses or restaurants. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah. uh, well, get, it will, get the shot. Right. We'll, we'll find out. It, you know, I don't know about you, but people have told me that uh, when I put on a mask, it does the public a, a service. You know, I look well, better with a mask on. So I'm, I, I'm thinking that some, I, yeah, some people look better yeah. with a mask on, <laughs> myself included, right. frankly. Chet, thanks for coming in. You bet.